in the cemetery. And that came and went back to heaven with what God planted and deposited in their life. Hear this. The worst thing that can happen to any human being, including you that is looking at me, is to come to planet Earth with the virtues that God has embedded in your life, yet they, you appeared here and vanished without manifesting them. You are fully loaded on the inside, yet you existed without manifesting them. Let me come away from David. First Samuel chapter 10, in verse 1, the Bible recorded, and, then, and Samuel took the vial of oil <laughs> and poured it on him and kissed him and said, Is it not that the Lord has anointed you to be a captain over his inheritance? Read verses 4 to 6. Verse 5. Continue. Just keep going. And the Spirit of the Lord Spirit, remember from the beginning, I told us that the oil communicates the Spirit of God. The oil is not the Holy Spirit. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Hear me properly. But the oil, oil transports. The oil can convey, but not the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. You shall be turned into another man, means Saul before now has been a wanderer, moving up and down, helter skelter, looking for lost donkeys. But God is saying there is a better thing on your inside that I want to bring out that is meant to better your destiny than just following animals. You are meant to be a captain, and it was turned into another man to be turned into another man what does it insinuate it means let a better version of you emerge let a better person emerge from your destiny there is more to your life than you behold right now there is a better person that you carry on the inside that i yet to manifest but on this anointing service i call them forth in the name of jesus take your oil and stand up and we're going to pray over the oil. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we present these bottles of oil to you. Lord, we want to thank you because in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And earth was without form and void. And the Spirit was hovering upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. Holy Spirit, behold these bottles of oil. Hoover upon them. The same way you did in the beginning. Out of these bottles of oil, let there be light. I pray that this oil will become an extension of your power. Let this oil become an extension of your glory. Let it become the oil of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that this oil becomes the anointed oil and it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke shall be broken from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. By these bottles of oil in your hands, I decree they are now the anointed oil. They are now the yoke breaking oil. In the name of Jesus. Take a little of that oil and you lay, lay it on your forehead and you are going to pray. Say, by this anointing oil, by this anointing oil let, my let my hidden potentials manifest. manifest. By this anointing, by this anointing oil, oil, let my hidden potentials manifest. 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 Open up your mouth and pray. Makaka kaki pari kako koriba, maki pari kaka kaki pa, maki pari kako koriba. Yet by this oil, 
let the best of my life appear. Let another Benjamin manifest. Let my potentials appear. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. Number two. How does the anointing provoke fruitful existence? The anointing is the secret of the commanded blessing. The anointing is the secret of the commanded blessing. When we talk about commanded blessings, we are talking about the blessings that you don't beg for. Blessings that you don't look for. Rather, the blessings that come looking for you. Now, let's read where Uncle Sakwa read Psalms 133 this time. Let's look at NKJV version. NKJV 133 verse 1. Yes, verse 2. Uh-huh. And in verse 3, Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forever. How good and beautiful is it for the brethren to dwell together in unity. <laughs> it is like that precious oil that flows through the head, through the beards of Aaron, through the beards of Aaron, Aaron, it is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Hear me, what is commanded blessing? Commanded blessings are blessings under pressure. B blessings that have been put under pressure to manifest in your life. The blessing that is under pressure to showcase in your destiny. For there, the Lord commanded. The Lord commanded. You were not looking for it. You were not begging for it. The blessing said, whether you like it or not, I have been sent to bless you. And you must be blessed. I pray that by this oil that is on your life, you shall be a beneficiary of the commanded blessing. Yeah. Blessings shall begin to locate you from the north, blessing from the south, blessing from the east, and blessing from the west. Somebody shout, I receive! Yeah. Commanded blessings. Talk about beneficiaries of commanded blessings in the Bible. Jephthah in Judges chapter 11. He was thrown away because his mother was a Malaya. I will tell you that that wasn't his fault. Nobody has the right to choose who will be the mother. You can choose them through that. Thing. That's, in this case, you don't have a choice. And he was chased away from his people and he went into the wilderness and talked about commanded blessing. There, appeared, there, there came war, and they went into the forest looking for him. And they begged him to come and be their captain. And he said, on the account that if I win this war, I will be a leader over your people. They said, Mulange, be our leader. Remember, this was a child of a Malaya they had sent away. They are now begging him to come and be their leader. People that had this pies you before, we come begging you to lead them. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Commanded blessing, commanded blessings, commanded blessing, commanded blessing. Saul, that became the king, was moving around with the servant of the father looking for their lost donkey. As a matter of fact, when they came to Samuel, they were not coming for him to be anointed king. They came so that Samuel will give them a prophecy where the animals were. But when he came, Samuel said, Munange, is it not that the Lord has anointed you to be a captain over his people and you are here looking for animals? Sebo. 
God has a, a better agenda for you. You are looking for animals. There is something better than animals. And lo and behold, he was anointed and he became king. Hallelujah. So the anointing is the secret of the commanded blessing. Of the commanded blessing. Of the commanded blessing. Of the commanded blessing. Talk about other people that inherited commanded blessings. In the Bible, David was a beneficiary. Remember when Samuel the prophet came into the home of Jesse with a bottle of oil. David was not considered, even by Jesse. That was why he was not called for that meeting. He was not called. The father presented Eliab the first son, presented Abinadab the second son, presented she is it Shama, sorry, Shama the third, and lo and behold, heaven was rejecting them one after the other, one after the other, and he got a point. And Samuel wondered and pondered, Are these your only children? Say, oh. He said, No, could you be looking for the one in the wilderness? I didn't bother to call him because he doesn't look like a king. He's, you know, David was a short guy, short but fully loaded. Somebody can be shot, but heavily loaded by God. That was David for you. And someone said, by the way, thou rejected child in the wilderness. None of us will sit down until he comes. And everyone in the home of Jesse, including the big boys, gave David a standing ovation. Gave David a standing ovation. David did not lobby to be king. David did not bribe anybody to be king it was forced on him that is what we call commanded blessing talk about people that enjoyed commanded blessing solomon was another guy solomon was not in contention to re to be succeed david as the king of israel why there were two major contenders <laughs> abiata and absalom because solomon was a product of a side dish and he knew, even in his dream, he knew that he can never become a king. Because the big boys of the house, the sons of the soil, were Absalom and Abiata. And that was why when this Absalom and Abiata were competing for the kingship, Solomon was not anywhere near the equation. If he had dreamed it, they would have killed him. But he didn't even dream it. And that was why they spared him, because Absalom was looking for who to kill. But eventually, heaven remembered him. It doesn't matter who has rejected you. God is looking for you. Yeah. Say a better amen. Yeah. David, it was David that said, even if my father and my mother reject me, the Lord will accept me. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I've discovered that God is looking for the rejected. God uses the reject more than any other thing. Yeah. Number three. The anointing is the secret of visibility. The anointing is the secret of the visibility. The anointing is the secret of visibility. The unction of the spirit is the secret of distinction in life. Of <laughs> the challenge that many people are suffering these days is because they are there, yet they are not visible. It is possible that you are there, yet you are not visible. It is possible to be a member of a church like this, yet people are not aware that you are here. It is possible to be in an organization, yet nobody knows that you are in that organization. Why? The enemy has covered such people. The enemy, what, what the oil does is that the anointing gives you visibility. First John chapter 2 and in verse 20. First John chapter 20, verse 20. First John chapter 2, first John chapter 2, I beg your pardon, chapter 2. But you have an unction from the Holy One that you know all things. But you have an unction from the Holy One that you know all things. Pastor, what are you talking about? Obscurity can be your level or portion when you carry the authentic oil of God on your life. Obscurity can never be your portion. No devil, no witch is witchy enough to cover you up. When you carry the oil of God on your life, 
Pastor, what are you talking here? Psalms chapter 104, verse 15. Psalms chapter 104, and in verse 15. Psalms number 104, verse 15. <coughs> and wine that make it glad the heart of man, and oil, and oil that make it his face to shine. The oil make it the face to shine, and bread which threatening man's heart. Oil make it your face to shine. The anointing advertises you. The anointing places you on the mountain of visibility where nobody will claim ignorance of your existence. Nobody. Because the oil make it your face to shine. The unction places upon your life a stamp of distinction. Carry your oil. We are going to handle that again. Take a little of the anointing oil and you keep the bottle and you stand on your feet. Put that oil on your forehead. Say, my father, by this anointing oil, advertise my life and my destiny. By this anointing oil, advertise my life and my destiny. Make my life to shine. Open up your mouth and pray. By this anointing, make my life and destiny to shine. Advertise my life and destiny. Advertise my life and destiny. Are you praying? In Jesus' name we pray. By this oil that is on your forehead, I hereby decree and declare that you will stand out in destiny. Yeah. Anywhere you appear, you will stand out. Yeah. In the midst of, of your contemporaries, you are standing out. Yeah. In the midst of multitude, you will be standing out. Yeah. Where others are standing, you will be outstanding. Yeah. I declare this the mantle of visibility. The name of Jesus, say better, amen. amen. Please be seated. Number four, the anointing is the secret of progress and acceleration in life. The anointing is the secret of progress and acceleration in life. Secret of progress and acceleration in life. First Samuel chapter 10, 1 and 3. After the oil, you came in verse 1 and in verse 3. Verse 3. And thou shalt go on forward. The oil came on his head. And in verse 3, there was a marching order. Thou shalt go on forward. Then, and thou shalt come. Thou shalt go on forward. That means the anointing, the anointing provokes progress. And acceleration and acceleration. The oil cannot come on your life and your destiny is stunted. No way. The oil is an elevator of destiny. The oil is a, is a sponsor of progress in life. And thou shalt go forward. People with the oil on their head don't get stuck at a place. People with oil on their head don't go forward. When they were at the Red Sea and there was no way forward, Red Sea before them, behind them was Pharaoh and his armed forces. Beside them were the mountains of Egypt and God thundered in the midst of that confusion. Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Hear this. Anointing does not know stagnation. Anointing has no respect for retrogression. Anointing understands what language. And it is called progression. 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 On this anointing service, I address your destiny. By the authority in the name of Jesus, retrogression comes to an end in your life. Stagnation comes to an end in your destiny. From this day, I stand as a Moses over your life. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Let your amen make it a reality. 
So the anointing is an unmistakable stamp. That makes you to stand out anywhere. Anywhere you appear. Nobody can claim ignorance of your existence. Number four. Or rather, <laughs> we have looked at number four. Number five. The anointing provokes total transformation of life. The anointing provokes total transformation of life. First Samuel chapter 1 verse 6. We have read it. But let's read it one more time. Of course, chapter 10 and in verse 6. Chapter 10 and in verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Tra total transformation. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 8 to 9, we are going to read together. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Let's read one to go. Give us NLT. Simple translation. Let's read one to go. Verse 9. You know what God was, God sent, God woke up prophet Nathan and said, look, go and tell David, lest he start misbehaving, where I took him from. I took him from following animals, <laughs> and I made him to be a captain over my people, a ruler over my people. And he said, I'm go now I've defeated all his enemies. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on earth. And that's why till tomorrow, if there is a king in Israel that stood out than any other king till eternity, his name is David. Even Jesus our Lord is referred as son of David. That's to tell you how great the name of David is as far as God is concerned. What do you call this? Total transformation. From a boy following animals to becoming a king, to becoming a famous person that even generations unborn we still hear about him. That is called total transformation. May this anointing also transform your destiny. Amen. If you're saying MM, say better MM. Amen. Number six and the last one. The anointing is the secret of quality meaningful and durable life. Three things I've mentioned in one. The anointing is the secret of quality, A, meaningful and durable life. Pastor, what are you talking here? Let me explain them. Quality. You are, you are not just living. Your life has value. <laughs> you are, each time you are not in the office, you, your absence creates concern among other staffs. They know that something is missing. But there are people, even when they have not been in office for one week, nobody knows. And there are those that their absence generates joy. Thank God he didn't come today. Thank God she's, ah, let her stay before coming. Now look at David to talk about quality life. When, what's his name? Jonathan, the son of David. When David, when he advised David to keep away from the Passover feast, and David wondered and said, but Munangi, but your father will start looking for me. The first day of the feast, the seat of David was vacant. Second day, Saul got concerned. Where is the son of Kish? Do people ask questions when you are absent from duty? That tells you if your presence has any value. Quality, meaningful. Not all lives are meaningful. <laughs> Let me help you a little bit. What makes your life meaningful is the impact you are generating. How, how you are impacting other people. If you are living for self, your life has no meaning to God. If the reason why you are living on earth is self, everything self, you have never impacted anybody, no destiny has been rescued, no life has been helped, it is just self, myself, my wife, Uganda Limited. <laughs> Go and rethink about that life you are living. Because the truth of the matter is that the day you will die, nobody will cry except your wife. 
That's the truth of the matter. That means the only person praying for you is your wife. Because you have never helped anybody under heaven. Nobody has ever drank water from your cup. Nothing has ever dropped from your hand that impacted anybody, even in your extended family. What type of a man are you? You are not living a meaningful life. Meaningful life means impactful, impactful life. We are people we go on their knees and they are thanking God on your behalf. Lord, thank you for Brother Mugisha. Lord, thank you for Sister Caro. Why? Because you have impacted their lives in one way or the other. Hear me and I say it. Any life that is not impactful is a life that is not well lived. Any life that has not impacted anybody, you have not helped anybody, all the money you have ever made is yourself, my wife, my children, myself, my wife, my children, myself, my wife. What type of a person are you? There comes a time you need to open your hands and let other people drink water from your hand. Let other people. You don't need to have all the money in the whole world to impact people. The little you have can be shared. The little you have can impact other people. The little you have can impact. Now, hear this. As a man, hear me. When you are paying your children's school fees, don't brag that you are impacting their life. That is your responsibility, Sable. That's why when you're paying their fees, they don't tell you thank you because they know that is your work. <laughs> <laughs> that is part of your schedule as a father. You don't just give back to children for nothing. When you are giving back to children, you are taking upon your life obligation. That's why they may decide to look the other way without saying thank you because they know you are doing your work. It's your work. <laughs> the only people that can say thank you are people you don't know. People from extended family. You don't owe them any obligation. You don't owe them any obligation. You don't owe them any obligation. From the blue, just like you had their story and you decided to step in in order to help them. How many people have you wiped away their tears since God started giving you money? He told Abraham, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. How many people have you ever been a blessing to? Or are you a kind of a person that is interested? Give me, give me, give me. How many have you given? How many orphaned children have you paid their fees back to school? You don't know them or how many? How many widows have you visited and wiped away their tears? How many widows have eaten your sugar? That's how you know if you're impacting destinies. <laughs> That's how Jesus gave a parable of the good Samaritan. He said, how many of these people, the priest came, the Pharisee came, the Samaritan came, and Jesus asked, how many of these three people do you think has shown love? And they said, the good Samaritan. Jesus said, go and do likewise. That means it's possible to be a pastor, yet you are not showing love to people. That means it's possible to be this and that. God does not measure us by how many years we are spent in church. God measures us by the amount of love we show to humanity. How we try to help him to look after people who are underprivileged, who cannot look after their life. Who cannot look after their life? Who cannot look after their life? Who cannot look after their life? I remember one young man from our Fututu branch. <laughs> I saw him when we, we went there some time ago. And he was sent away from school. And it came to my attention. And the young man came to Kampala. And I asked him, what do you want to do? He said, I want to go to school. I want to go to, I said, okay, fine, you go back to school. I will take that as my obligation. I will pay, not the church. All right, bang, we pay. Why? I know the implication. If the church pays, the blessing goes to the church. But if Ben pays, the blessing comes to Ben. <laughs> so me, I know. I say me, Ben, Nebechuku, I will pay. He went back, finished senior six, finished senior six, came out from secondary school. He had an option to go to vocational or go to university. He got admission. One of these private universities in Kampala here. The fees were up there. He said, no, Papa, I can go to vocational. I looked at him, intelligent young man, 
who has the capacity to be an architect or a civil engineer. And I say, it will be wickedness on my part to reduce his destiny and tell him, go and do vocational because of money. I say, you go and enroll civil engineering. I started paying the fees. Not a small money. <laughs> right now, he's doing his final year. He's doing his final year. Now, supposing if I look the other way around, I don't know him all. He's now from Nigeria. I have never seen his mother. I don't even know his father. So that's when I talk about impacting people for God, that is what I'm talking about. There must be somebody somewhere you have wiped away his tears. There are people crying to God that you can say, no, God, for this one, I will help you to step in and sort out this issue. Many people are disturbing you, but this one I can handle. Mm -hmm. Have I not told you a story? A former Congolese Bible teacher in a Bible college who had gone to the U.S. for the first time in his life, and he went with a shopping list. And the first church he went to preach, he was telling me this story, I was just laughing. A Muzungu called him after the church service and said, what are some of your needs? Let me agree with you in prayer. He brought out his list. He said, number one, I need a laptop. <laughs> and the Muzungu said, this one, let's not disturb God. This one I can buy. <laughs> the Muzungu told him, cross it. Don't disturb God about this one. How many things are you stopping people from disturbing God? There are things you can provide, and people will not disturb God. And angels will record it to your credit in heaven. Amen. That this person helped God to solve this problem. It will not go unrewarded. For God is not unfaithful to forget your labor of love, which you have shown towards his name. Quality, meaningful, and durable life. Of course, durable life. It's the song, Mama's song we just sang now. You are my defense, my strong tower, my solid rock. I am hiding in you. You are my defense, my strong tower, my solid rock. I am hiding in you. You are my defense, Lord. John chapter 2 verse 27 first John chapter 2 verse 27 first John chapter 2 and in verse 27 and we'll read but the anointing which you have received of him abided in you and you need not that any man teach you but the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie even as he has taught you you shall abide in him your life cannot in any way be inferior, meaningless, when the anointing is on your life. We need to close this service. What are the secrets of the anointing? In the first service, I said passion. Passion for God and passion for kingdom assignment. In this service, number one, compassion for the needy. Compassion for the needy. Compassion for the needy. Needy. <laughs> Compassion. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God. Who went about doing good. Doing good. He was anointed and he went about doing good. Compassion for the needy. First John chapter 4 verse 20. First John chapter 4, but if a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he's a liar. For he that loved not his brother, whom he had seen, how can he love God, whom he had not seen, whom he had not seen, whom he has not seen. So it takes compassion for you to have authentic love for another human being. Compassion for God. Heart for the people will bring the anointing on your life. Heart for the people. Heart for the people. A heart for the people is the key to power with God.
because every genuine love for God will translate into love for the people. Number two, and the last one, hatred, secrets of the anointing, hatred for oppression and the oppressor. Hatred for oppression and the oppressor. Psalms 45, verse 7. Thou loveth righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. Because you love righteousness and hate wickedness, God, you are God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your contemporaries. When you hate what God hates and like what God likes, then you are set for the anointing. When you hate what God hates and love what God loves, you are set for the anointing. Uh, did you get anything this afternoon? Yes. Close your eyes, bow down your head, and begin to thank God for what you've had. Just honor him. Close the bottles of oil by your side. Just adore him. Just glorify him. Just magnify him. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and thank him. Just go ahead and honor him. I yield to you. I enter in your rest to allow you to have your way. I yield to you. anointing on my life. Let my life take a new turn for the best. On this, by this anointing on my life, let my destiny be resurrected afresh. Pray that prayer. Everybody pray it. As others are praying this prayer, if you are here this afternoon, and you are not born again. You are here this afternoon. You have not surrendered your life to Jesus. <laughs> there is no life without Jesus. Life void of Jesus Christ is a meaningless and useless life. It will not take you anywhere. But not to worry. You are here this afternoon. You are saying, Pastor, I want to make peace with my God. Pastor, I want to reconcile with my maker. Just raise your hand wherever you are. You want to hand over your life to Jesus. You want to make peace with your maker. As others are praying, raise your hand, raise your hand. That is the beginning of the meaningful life. In the name of Jesus. Do that quickly so that I can pray for you. You are saying, I don't like this life I'm living. There is a better life in God. My God has a better future for me. He said, my thought for you is of good and not of evil. To give you a better future. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Others, keep praying. Don't leave here if you are not born again. God may be giving you an opportunity to open a new chapter of life. Life is not meant to be endured. Life is meant to be enjoyed. For how long will you keep struggling and laughing? For how long will you keep walking like an elephant and eating like mosquito? You are here, you are saying, I want to bring God into my life so that God can help me fulfill destiny. Go ahead, keep coming to the altar. Keep coming.
You have nothing to pretend. You have no devil to be ashamed of. It is your life. It is your life. It is your life. It is your choice. Keep coming. Don't live here if you have not made peace with God. Don't live here if you have not made peace with God. of you at the altar, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have come before you. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, remove my names from the books of hell. Write my name in the book of life. Satan, I reject you. Today, Jesus has become my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I pray for you. Father, behold your sons and daughters. They have come to a place of refuge. Lord, accept them as your children. Delete their names from the books of hell. Write their names in the book of life. Satan, I disconnect you from their life. I break your grip over their soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Congratulations. Please stand up. Just follow this sister on your left. She will talk to you for one minute. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's package our offer trays as we begin to wrap up this service. Need an envelope? Let the ushers know by raising your hands. Father, we want to thank you. What a privilege to give. For it is more blessed to give than to receive. We have not come with empty hands. Accept the givings of your people. Let there be multiplication. Cause your people to blossom and flourish in destiny. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen few announcements and we'll wrap up this service. Oh, sorry. Some people have items to dedicate. I thought we don't have any for this service. I'll mention your name. Drop your offer tree. Then you, you step out. Nazario Mugerua, a gift deed land. Christine Atim, job contract. Provia Musime, land agreement. Helen Aleni, new car. Sandra Akilu, new contract, passport. Dr. Milton Otema, new car. Miriam Agwo, new job contract. Please step out. So let me start with land agreements, land matters. Drop them here. Father, all the lands belongs unto you. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and them that dwell therein. Lord, thank you for blessing your children with this land. On the account of this dedication, let power change hands over this land. Oh, on the account of this dedication, we chase away from this land ancestral spirits. On the account of this land, let power change hands over this land. Let the Holy Spirit take over this land. I pray that these lands are redeemed from land grabbers. These lands are redeemed from land encroachers. We hereby dedicate this land in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And let somebody say, Amen. God bless you. Let's handle job contract job contract. Father, thank you because every good and perfect gift coming from above, from the Father of light in whom there are no variableness.
thank you for you have provided these jobs for your people. I ask, oh God, that this contract we do them well. This contract will not be terminated untimely. This contract we give back to bigger contracts. We hereby dedicate them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we have prayed. New car, passports. New car, new car. Okay, passports, it's fine. And car, you can drop also. Father, I hand over this passport to you. Let the seal of heaven come upon this passport. The essence of this passport is to open door to the nations of the world. I pray on the account of this dedication, this passport will not know visa refusal. Gates of nations opens for this passport. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, thank you for providing your son with this new vehicle. The blessings of God, it makes rich and does not add sorrow. This new vehicle is a blessing. It will not bring sorrow to your son and his family. I pray that this vehicle will not become a source of devouring his world. This vehicle will not waste his life. This vehicle will not shed any blood. I pray that Holy Spirit by this dedication be enthroned behind his driving wheel. We hereby dedicate this vehicle in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I pray that this vehicle will give birth to a bigger vehicle. And let the church say, Amen. God bless you. Congratulations. Do we have anybody giving towards prayer city? Please step out. As they are stepping out, let me quickly go through the announcements for the week. Child dedication will happen very soon. Parents, register your child, your children for dedication with the church administrator at the overflow. Water baptism will also happen in near future. Register with the church administrator. Morning dominion resumes as usual, Monday through to Friday, 5 a.m. in the morning to 6 a.m. Start your day with that fire. It is very profitable to maximize the day. Lunch hour, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, excellent married men prayer meeting every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Jericho every Wednesday, 5.30. Marriage revival program for the married and singles concerning marriage, 5, 7 a.m. online every Thursday. School of Deliverance Basic, you don't have classes today. Prevailing women prayer meeting every Thursday, 5.30 here at church. Youth on fire Thursday on, fa on <laughs> uh, for their prayer meeting 5:30 on Thursday battle cry Friday 11 p.m. with holy communion solution hour Saturday 8 a.m. home fellowship Saturday 5 p.m. next Sunday is our Thanksgiving Sunday church pray for these ones who are giving towards the prayer city go ahead and pray for them. Begin to conclude. In Jesus' name we pray. It is written, all houses are built by some men. But he that builds all things is God. As you build for God, may God build up your destiny. Let every department of your life be built up by Jehovah. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Can we stand up now? We need to wrap up this service. Come into your week into God's hands, everybody. Hand over your week. Pray. name we pray. I commit your week into God's hands. Open your hands.
every good and perfect gift comes from God. The Bible says God opens his hand to satisfy the desires of every living thing. I pray that the hands of God opens towards your life to satisfy whatever is your desire for this week in the name of Jesus. I pray that your needs for the week shall be supernaturally met by God. I pray that God will open the book of remembrance for your sake this week. I pray that this week you shall stress no more. It shall be a week of no stress. It shall be a week of no regret. It shall be a meaningful and impactful week. It shall be a result-oriented week. Whatever you are set out to do this week shall be accomplished. In the name of Jesus, your portion for the week shall be delivered into your hands. In the name of Jesus, no evil befalls you this week. No bad news shall locate you this week. This week, the phone in your hand will ring and it will bring good news. Your emails will pop up with good news. Messengers of good news are hereby delegated to run after you this week. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. As we share the grace, please, the Bible says we give honor to whom honor is due. We keep standing, let the bagolets work out so that we don't get crashed with them. Are we in agreement? So we share the grace, we allow them to step out. Then for us, we will now move and follow them. Can we share? If you are fellowshipping with us for the first time, we have many visitors today. I may not be able to recognize you one after the other. But all I'm saying is that we love you and Jesus also loves you. We are called the Living Word Assembly where Jesus is the owner of the church. Hallelujah. Can we share the grace in fellowship? Surely. Twenty twenty two all run blessings. God bless you. Let's allow them to walk out majestically, then we'll walk out.